Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and uh, today we're going to be going over the final iteration of our Zero Point team, and uh, I just wanted to go over this picture a little bit because I've been using it for the thumbnail and all the cliffhanger um, uh, battles, and this is uh, me. We went on vacation in March to New Zealand, and we did a little bit of climbing, so uh, I'm very afraid of heights, so it was pretty scary. So let's just go ahead and get into the battle here. There. <clears throat> for this battle it's not like a best of five or anything we just uh we're playing and uh however many battles we did is how many we did um so we can see their team and our final team and i'll go over what our team is uh how it became this at the very end of the video and uh they have a unique team of shift tree um altaria bronzong raichu mantine and hitmochan so we start out golbat versus their hitmochan which is a really good matchup for us. And then they swap into Raichu and we swiftly swap back in or into Bayleaf. And we're just going to Razor Leaf the Raichu down. Um, and at this point we had enough for an Ancient Power or yeah, Ancient Power <clears throat> that the Altaria shielded and then Altaria swiftly took out our Bayleaf. So we bring in Mantine uh, versus the Altaria, and we're going to be shielding the Dragon Pulse here. Um, even if it was a uh, Sky Attack, we would have, uh, or Aerial Ace, we would have uh, shielded it. And he swaps into the Hitmonchan, uh, presumably because he had energy, but we were throwing out an Aerial Ace anyways, which if that had landed, would have been super effective against Hitmonchan. So I think uh, when we come in with this Golbat, we're just going to farm down the Hitmonchan because we really need... Um, a lot of energy coming into the Altaria matchup since uh, Golbat's not the greatest versus Altaria. But if we have this much of an energy advantage, you know, we're going to be able to take it out. And actually, Shadow Ball does a pretty decent amount. Um, we CMP tie here on this move, so I'm just hoping that I don't die from it, and we actually do live. And I think that this uh, Poison Fang is going to be able to take out the Altaria. You know, Poison Fang and Shadow Ball do. Uh, decent damage just because it's a uh, neutral damage against Altaria um, Which is kind of why I brought Golbat in in this final iteration uh, If you noticed in the last video Golbat wasn't on our team. I think we had Togekiss and We decided to go for Golbat as our second flyer uh, Instead of Togekiss hard decision because Togekiss had done so well for us in the past, but I think um, We didn't want to hang on to just uh, pure damage, you know, we wanted a more balanced team. So starting in this next matchup, we have Golbat versus Mantine. It's a pretty uh, even matchup. Their Mantine is the uh, wing attack uh, fast move uh, version. And um, that's going to be doing uh, neutral damage against Golbat. He does switch out into Bronzong, and I think about switching. <clears throat> but we actually could have thrown off a Shadow Ball there. The Shadow Ball would have uh, been super effective because Bronzong is also Psychic type, in a, along with being Steel. So um, I didn't think that through right there. I don't think, uh, but I do realize that later on in the in some of the other matches. And so uh, we ended up bringing in Bayleaf. Really poor decision on our part. Uh, Bronzong is going to be doing Confusion and Psy Shock, which is going to be doing a lot of damage to Bayleaf. And so we made a little bit of a mistake there. And uh, something I want to note uh, along with that is that um, when I was running the zero point team, the thing I noticed the most was that um, even with this current iteration of the team, if you mess up in the match, um, you're gonna it's gonna be really hard pressed for you to come back because you don't have the leeway of having like super bulky a zoom roll or large coverage uh, of moves that he has so it is really hard to come back from deficits at the zero um uh, with the zero point teams which makes sense so just have that in mind uh, when you're in the games if you want to go for a zero point team you're going to have to run it sort of to perfection um which can be really difficult 
So here we go in game three. We start with uh, Marsh Stomp versus Raichu. Really good match for Marsh Stomp. And he brings in uh, Bronzong, which is interesting because Marsh Stomp also has a good matchup against him because of the ground typing versus the steel. Um, so we're going to shield this, and we sort of just farmed up a lot, and we have enough for a Mud Bomb here. Uh, so we go for it, and if he lets this through, it's going to KO. Yeah, it's going to take out the Bronzong. Now he does have a shield advantage on us, and he brings in the Altaria, and we need to get out with the Marsh Stomp, because Altaria is going to eat uh, Marsh Stomp alive. So um, he has the two shields. We need to go for bait here because we need to take out uh, the shields as well as the Altaria. Um, but if we take out the Altaria with the Raichu in the back, we'll always have we'll always have Marsh Stomp. So we sort of just we have two Pokemon uh, with Mantine and uh, and Golbat to take out the two shields and Altaria. So I kind of like our chances in this game. But Altaria is a 9-point Pokemon and is an actual beast. So let's see if we get there. And our Golbat does go out, but we Golbat did a really good job of taking out both shields. So Mantine, all Mantine has to do is do this 20% damage to, uh, to Altaria, and then um, he'll have done his job. But this is a really good switch in by him to uh, bring in the Raichu who already has a charge move available and just instant KO our Mantine from half HP. Um, we do switch into Marsh Stomp, but now we're pretty much in the hopes that this Surf takes out the Altaria because if it doesn't, uh, we're done for. So luckily enough, we do. And you're going to want to use the Surf versus Altaria because it does uh, neutral damage, whereas the uh, Mud Bombs are resisted. So uh, we're up 2-1, to one. game 4 here, we decide to bring uh, Aggron. Um, he's going to be a counter to the flying types, and especially since this Mantine has wing attack, which is going to be resisted. Um, but we actually got scared that the Mantine could have um, the water move, I believe it's water pulse, for one of the charge moves. And he switches into Raichu, and we could have stayed in with Aggron. Aggron's actually pretty, uh, really good against uh, the... Uh, uh, the Glass Cannon Raichu Electric type, but we have Marsh Stomp in the back, so we might as well try to gain an advantage with um, an energy advantage with Marsh Stomp, since he's going to be able to take all of these moves without taking very much damage. And we do notice his Raichu is running Brick Break, probably for the coverage. Um, pretty good to have uh, good coverage on all your Pokemon if possible. And he brings back in the Mantine. And we throw out a uh, Mud Bomb there, which was not the best decision. It is resisted. Um, it might even be double resisted. I'm not 100% sure on that. And against this Hitmonchan, um, we just throw out this Mud Bomb because we uh, we're about to go out. So we need to just throw any damage we can at him, uh, hoping to get a shield. But we have Golbat in the back, uh, and we have two shields. So all we're going to need to do is Wing Attack it down. Um, we probably will throw out a Poison Fang just to get the shield out, and we probably are going to get to another Poison Fang, to be fair, just because we have an, uh, an extra shield up on him here um, from the rest of the match playing out the way it did. So, Aggron um, is going to be a little bit of an underlooked Pokemon, I think, and he isn't the greatest Pokemon, but he kind of runs the same role as uh, Bastiodon does. He's just not as tanky and does uh, less damage, if you can somehow believe that. And his coverage moves aren't as good. But he does have a Smackdown, which is a really good uh, rock move, which can hurt the Flyers, and also Stone Edge. And <clears throat> I don't know what other third move he can have, but we are using the Steel one. Um, just for a little bit of extra coverage against the fairies if we run into Togekiss or um, Clefable. Uh, so this match started off not great for us. We swap into um, Golbat here to take out the sh Shift Tree. Um, Golbat's going to be really insanely good against the Grass types. Uh, you can pretty much farm them down. It's not... He's, he doesn't have the bulkiness of like Steelix, uh, not Steelix, uh, Skarmory, 
Um, but you can pretty much farm down a lot of the grass types. Maybe you'll use a shield, but you'll have so much energy going into the next matchup. And his move coverage is so good that you can bait so many shields with the uh, Poison Fang because they never know. You, you, gain, you gain energy so fast on Golbat, they don't know which one you're going. If you have the Shadow Ball up, if you have the Poison Fang up, you know, they don't know. And uh, right there, Altaria shields the Poison Fang. Um, because he's, well, he's at super low life, but he wanted to get off a, uh, uh, a, a move there. And we go for the rock move here, uh, not really realizing that it is going to be resisted. Um, but I ran the numbers. Um, the grass moves are also going to be resisted. And even if we had used, um, I think it's energy ball it still wouldn't have KO'd the uh, Bronzong. So he takes that game. Uh, it's 3-2, really close, uh, but we are ahead. And really, um, if I can go, I do want to go better than even, but if you go even to better with a zero point team, I mean, you're doing pretty good, um, to be fair, because it's going to be hard to beat these uh, nine pointers and even the five pointers um, with these Pokemon. So, uh, Bayleaf versus Mantine, this matchup's pretty neutral. It's slightly favored to um, Bayleaf. And we get the shield out there because of the rock move, which does super effective against flying. But we uh, also need to shield the Mantine move, um, the Ice Beam, because it would have been super effective. And that leads me to believe that this Mantine actually doesn't have, uh, because it would have used Aerial Ace if it had it because it costs less energy than ice beam so he would have been able to get to maybe another one or um yeah just saved energy in general so bronzon comes in here and at this point is when i realize oh yeah it's psychic also so i can just use shadow ball which is going to be super effective and i could have just stayed in that matchup um but i still do want my marsh stomp to gain some energy here going into a final matchup but it is against shift tree so shift tree and really any razor leaf user is going to melt marsh stomp yeah you see us get absolutely destroyed in like two hits but by that same token our goal bat's going to be farming down the shift tree without really taking very much damage either so you know it's a little give and take and i think uh Marstomp's good enough to keep on the team, especially since some teams are not necessarily going to have a grass type. Um, and a lot of people are also going to opt into using Tropius, uh, probably with Air Slash, just because, I mean, well, I think that version of Tropius is the best in general, uh, mainly because it's going to be a grass type that absolutely destroys the other grass types. Um, so I think Marstop's going to have a little less to worry about, which is also a reason I have Relicanth. They're both double weak to grass, but I don't know how much grass there's actually going to be in the field. You know, some people are just going to opt out of grass in general. So we start out here in a bad matchup of Bayleaf against Altaria, and we swap into Golbat, and then he swaps into Bronzong. We go ahead and go for the Shadow Ball this time, but... Oh no, it does go through. I thought he shielded it. Um, so that's fine. We lose our Golbat, but we are at a shield advantage and we're at a Pokemon advantage. So uh, good on us. We did lose that switch advantage, but you know, we're coming back with the other resources that we have. And we went for a blind surf for anything that he's bringing in because we actually thought he was going to come back in with Altaria, who's really good against Marshtop. But it looks like he wanted to come in with Hitmonchan and get some energy gain on a different Pokemon, uh, which I think is a really good idea on his part. You know, he's going to be down here on shields, but we are now switch locked still into a bad matchup. And his Altaria is just going to farm us down. Um, we are going to shield just because Marsh not going to be able to do anything to this Altaria. So we want to get to this uh, Ancient Power and see if we can't knock it out with the super effective rock move. Um, we get really close and we actually do knock it out with the Razor Leaves. And this Hitmochan, though, is at full life and is going to... Yeah, he's going to take out this Marsh Stomp for sure. This uh, Mud Bomb's only going to do about 30%. So, yeah, we don't make it to the next one. 
Um, because Power Up Punch is on the same timer as uh, Mud Bomb is. So we're going to get to it at the same rate, but I used mine after he had already gained two counters worth of energy. So we would still need two more Mud Shots before we would be able to get our Mud Bomb off. So we start Mar Marsh Stomp here. Uh, we don't really like this matchup, but we decide to stay in enough to... Um, to farm a little bit and then swap out so that the power up punch is eaten by our Golbat. And then he swapped into Shift Tree here. Not sure if this was just a uh, misclick, um, but, but, uh, well, both of those Pokemon are really weak to flying types, Shift Tree and Hitmonchan, but I feel like he might have wanted to keep that Shift Tree. So we we're able to use one shield and then farm it down. And seeing that he has Mantine in the back, he probably does want to, would have wanted to come in with Mantine because even Shadow Ball is only going to do like 35-40% damage to Mantine. Yeah, you see right there, it's like 30-35. Um, so Mantine has a pretty good matchup against Golbat. And as soon as our switch timer's up, we switch into the mirror just because uh, it's our best choice against the Mantine. Um, and then he swaps into Hitmonchan right as we were doing an undertap actually for the uh, um, for the aerial ace. But uh, since we were in the undertap mode, we were waiting for him to get a move off, and he was able to switch out. So there are risks in using an undertap. Um, sometimes you won't be able to get the move off. So while there are uh, great times to use it, that that one. Uh, you know, gave him a little bit of an advantage. Uh, so at this point, all he has left is this Mantine. We still have all three of our Pokemon, so we're in a pretty good spot here. He is going to take out our Mantine, and we bring back in our... Uh, I was going to say Swampert, our Marsh Stomp. And we take an Ice Beam to the face, and I thought I could auto him down, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to go for one of these charge moves and take him out. So this is uh, eight games in, we're up five to three. And I, I think this is our last game, if I remember correctly. So we're gonna start, I really like this uh, team of three right here, of uh, Marsh Stomp, Mantine, and, and uh, Golbat. And I also like the team of three of swapping out Marsh Stomp for Bayleaf. Um, the leads can vary, um, but those two themes, teams of three, I really liked a lot against uh, our opponent here. So he starts Raichu, that's a really good lead for us, and we get our Mud Bomb off against Hitmonchan. Uh, we really didn't need to do that, but you know, we got a shield, so it's no harm, no foul, but you probably should save your charge move for a matchup that it's actually good against, since we're going to swap out anyways, and that wouldn't have done a ton of damage. Um, but we bring in Golbat, and we're just going to farm this matchup down. And we decide to take the punch here. Uh, and it was actually Thunder Punch. Usually it's going to be Ice Punch, but uh, we did that because we know Raichu can come back in, and we don't want to uh, we don't want the Raichu to be able to farm our Golbat down. We want him to be at such a low life total that the Raichu will only get a few hits off and then take us out. Uh, so he comes in with a Mantine, and we know we have um, Marsh Stomp here, who's going to be decent against Mantine, especially with the Surf doing neutral damage. Uh, actually, does it do neutral? No, it does resisted, but it's a uh, single resisted, so uh, it's going to be doing more than the mud bombs. But that Mantine does take out our Marsh Stomp, and we bring in our Mantine just to do the last bubble to it, and we know there's a Raichu in the back, but um, at this point we still have a shield, and we have two Pokemon. They're both weak to Raichu, but all we need to do is get off uh, charge moves, and slowly whittle this Raichu down, you know, he doesn't have the time to take both of our Pokemon out. And that Ice Beam actually did like 40%. So Raichu is a really frail Pokemon, really strong, does a ton of damage, but it's a glass cannon, so it takes a lot of damage as well. And our Golbat actually was way lower than I remember, but uh, we take out that Raichu and we end up going uh, six wins to three. And uh, let's go over our team a little bit. I think new additions to this team compared to our last one is that Marsh Stomp uh, was added in, I believe, and um, Golbat was added in. I think we took out Togekiss and Hitmonchan. So for the longest time, I thought I really needed a fighting type on the team, but 
I ended up deciding against it. Um, I don't know how necessary our fighting types are going to be. Uh, maybe this will be a problem, maybe it won't. But I really liked the addition of Marsh Stomp. And uh, let me go through uh, the team starting at the top left. So Bayleaf, I've already talked about it a little bit in uh, the last video, but Razor Leaf user, um, really high in bulk because it gets to level 40 uh, under the 1500 cap. And it has really good coverage moves. It has Ancient Power to hit the Flying and Ice types. And it has, uh, I believe, Energy Ball, which is just a charge uh, grass move. But you probably won't need that since you're a Razor Leaf user. But maybe someone comes in with a double water and you take one out with the Razor Leafs and you have enough for a charge move um, on the back end. So next Pokemon is Mantine. Um, we really like Mantine. We started using him in the last uh, video, I think probably the last four days or so. Um, I prefer the Bubble and Ice Beam Aerial Ace version. Um, I really like the Bubble Auto Attack. It does a lot of damage to everything. Um, plus, I really don't need a ton of grass coverage. If I think I need grass coverage, I'll probably use um, Golbat. But you'll also, even if you use Bubble versus Venusaur, you're going to get to your Aerial Aces uh, just as fast. So it's it still sort of counters Venusaur. You are going to take a ton of damage. You need to shield every time they shield, but you'll end up winning that matchup if you do so. Um, my next pick is Relicanth. We didn't even use it at all in this uh, specific video, but I think Relicanth is uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, zero-point Pokemon. Uh, it really is hard to say best for, uh, for the zero-point Pokemon just because... Everything is um, based on your team synergies and your team comps in general. Um, but it hits the uh, tanks pretty hard. And uh, it also has really good coverage because it, too, just like Bayleaf, has Ancient Power, which is going to be able to hit the Flying and the uh, Ice types. Next we have Golbat. A really late addition to the team, but I really think he's... Uh, quite good. Uh, we're using Wing Attack, Shadow Ball, and Poison Fang. He just charges all of those moves super quickly because of uh, Wing Attack. Or, or uh, yeah, Wing Attack. And, um, yeah, not much more to say about that. It is tough to find uh, good flyers in the zero point. Um, if you notice, two of the nine pointers are flyers with Skarmory and uh, Altaria. And then... Uh, Tropius is a five-pointer as well. Uh, if Noctowl was down here, you would want to use him, but he's also in the one-pointer uh, category. And we really didn't get a chance to try Flygon uh, like Shagnus was using, so I, if you guys know if Flygon would have been a good choice here, go ahead and let me know. Uh, we don't, I don't even think I actually have a Flygon, um, so I would need to make that, uh, which I don't think I'm going to do. For this cup at least um another new like i said another new addition to this team is uh man i almost said swampert again um uh oh boy marsh stomp uh yeah so we were able to add marsh stomp to this team he's really good too really fast charging moves um he uses that mud shot mud shot to uh get to his charge moves very quickly and those charge moves are mud bomb and surf so extremely good coverage, very good against the tanks. So even better against the tanks than Relicanth, but but it has the exact same weaknesses as Relicanth. Um, so I'm starting to think about it right now. Maybe one of them might be fine to take off the team, but I think it's fine to keep them both on too. I ran a couple double waters. I ran a couple double flyers. Um, I don't think grass is going to be a huge concern. So I'm fine having two double weak grass Pokemon on my team, especially since I have two flyers. You know, it's going to be really hard for someone, even with grass user, to bring in a grass type, knowing that I have two flyers in the back, uh, as well as Bayleaf, who does really well against the other grasses as well, except for against Tropius. And then the uh, last member on our team is Agron. 
And like I said during this video, Agron is pretty much Bastiodon uh, light. So he's the zero point version of Bastiodon. Has a Smackdown Stone Edge and gosh, I think it's Flash Cannon. It's the, um, he has a Steel type move. I, I forget which one it is. Actually, I think it's Heavy Slam. Um, and we tried a bunch of different tanks for this slot. I do think we needed a tank uh, in general. We tried uh, Tyranitar, but it was just, you know, it hurt a lot of the flyers, but too squishy. And then we tried um, a low end Sand Slash in that uh, position. You saw that in the last video. You know, he he was pretty good, but he has some random other weaknesses, like to grass. Um, so I really didn't like him too much. We also tried, uh, we actually have a Legacy Duong that we got from uh, uh, from the Chicago Go Fest. And I liked it a little bit, but it wasn't great against Skarmory. Um, so I kind of just wanted something that could beat all three of the main flyers, the Skarmory, Altaria, and Tropius. And Agron does that. Um, they're much closer games than, uh, or matches than uh, Bastiodon, obviously. Um, but we're, we, have, we have a zero-point Bastiodon, so it's obviously going to be tougher for us. Um, we also tried uh, Celio, but it, it was pretty much the same as Duong. You know, they're both super tanky, but... Uh, just being that like ice water type, um, it, it was the typing that wasn't good enough uh, for us in that one. So this is our finalized team. Um, we have it locked in for two tournaments already. Uh, those tournaments haven't started because they're both remote. But um, hopefully I can get those videos out to you. Hopefully I can do well in them. Um, I do think this team is really good. You know, we've been um, creating this team like I said for about two weeks. So this is really the final iteration, and I believe that it's really strong. Hopefully, uh, you guys can try it out yourselves. Um, yeah, and if you do, go ahead and let me know. And if you want to watch these tournaments, hopefully they'll be done in a week or so, um, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can be the first to see them. All right, thanks for watching.